Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship for this Sunday, July 25th. Our focus today is how God gives us good things, how God serves us, how he served uh, the crowd, the multitude when they were hungry and he fed them with that miraculous meal of bread and fish and how he still serves us today. As always, the order of service is found right on your screen and we begin our time with confessing our sins and receiving forgiveness. So let's begin. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now hear from our choir. First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord that I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set my shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. 
Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as a king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go out and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn this day is You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. Please sing along. You satisfy the hungry heart with gifts of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family Lord, we follow and rejoice. With joyful hearts we sing to you. Our our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy lord to share this heavenly food the mystery of your presence lord no mortal tongue can tell whom all the world cannot contain comes in our hearts to dwell you give yourself to us O oh lord then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name in truth and charity you satisfy the hungry heart with gifts of finest wheat come give to us O saving lord the bread of life to eat we make our beginning in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit 
They came to the desolate place because they knew there would be good things there. When we hear the word desolate, the things that come to mind probably is like a uh, parched desert or a lonely island or a place far away from everything else, but not in a good way. A place void and empty of life. And that's a good way to describe that which is desolate. A place which is void and empty of life. The joys of life, but also the hubbub and chaos and hustle and bustle of life. I just spent a week in the backwoods of a rural area. And it felt good to get away from the hustle and bustle of life in the city and to be with myself and friends and with my God, away from everything that's going on. And that is healthy for us, isn't it? To get away from it all from time to time, to take some deep breaths and be in the midst of God's creation even if that is in a desolate place. We need to recharge our batteries. Even Jesus. Even Jesus and his disciples, they are called here apostles. The Greek word apostle is apostello. That means to be sent out. Jesus sent them out to go two by two and to share some news that the Messiah was here. They came back and they reported to him and they were tired. They were stressed out. It had been a long journey. And so Jesus, with his disciples, took them to a desolate place. A place void of the cares of the world to be at rest. They went there. They ran there because they were so busy. They didn't even have time to eat. That's right there in verse 31 of our gospel reading. It's interesting, isn't it? The disciples went to that desolate place to find rest, even so that they could have time to scrounge up a meal. And we know the miracle that would be to come. The feeding of the 5,000, 5,000 men, not even counting women and children. <coughs> But Jesus wasn't the only one to go to that desolate place. For where Jesus is, he brings life. And even to that lifeless place, that place devoid of life, when Jesus goes there, he makes it verdant and green and lush with life. And that's what's going on here. Jesus goes to that desolate place, and maybe one person sees him heading out that way. And he tells his friend, Jesus, the one whom we've been waiting for, the one who has captivated our imagination, he's going that way. There have been crowds around him all the time. Maybe we can get a little contact with him. Even like that woman just touched the hem of his garment and be so healed. But news about Jesus spreads like a wildfire. And so maybe it was just a few people who noticed him go out that way, but they hurried and they scurried to that place so that when Jesus and his disciples had crossed the sea, they were there. A multitude, thousands of people. Think about, uh, I'm trying to think about a church, probably the biggest church building in this country is down in Houston, Texas, the, uh, the Joel Osteen Church there. And it's in a former basketball arena. That place filled to the brim would hardly even contain the number of people who had gone to see Jesus this day. Jesus was tired. He was exhausted. He went to that place devoid of life so that he could recharge his batteries and be in communion with his disciples. But duty calls, doesn't it? Thousands of people there on the shores. So Jesus 
has compassion. He has compassion and he opens his mouth and he teaches. He sees they were like sheep without a shepherd. All the supposed shepherds of Israel, the chief priests, the scribes, the rabbis, the Pharisees, they had all gone and abandoned their flocks, had led them astray, had abused them. And so Jesus sees them and looks upon them with love. And he teaches. We don't know what exactly he said here. But he said it over the objections of his disciples, didn't he? His disciples said, send them away. You don't need them right now. You need some me time. Jesus is never for himself, but is always for you and me. And so he had compassion. But there was a problem. The disciples came to that place because they didn't even have time to eat. And there was this sea nearby. They were expert fishermen. They maybe could have gone and cast their nets into the water and caught themselves a little bit of supper. But now that time had passed. Thousands of people right there. What could they do? The disciples said, send them away into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy them something to eat. Jesus answered them, you give them something to eat. What a ridiculous question. Jesus knew they had no food. He knew that they had nothing on them. How could he give them something to eat? How even could they give that crowd something to eat. So what did they do? They went into the crowd and see to see if anyone had anything. Five loaves, two fish. You know what happens next, don't you? Raised it up, blessed it, and from that little there became a lot, a multitude of food for a multitude of people, and leftovers to boot. That lifeless, desolate place became full of life. Like the words our 23rd Psalm, which we had, which we just sang today, right before this, spreads a table before us filled with good things, just as a shepherd does. Jesus saw this flock, this congregation, as one who had been mistreated and abused by the so-called shepherds that were there, and he looked upon them and had compassion and love for them. And he knew that if he sent them away hungry, their experience would be incomplete. There is a lesson for us in this. When we are in the presence of God, when we are in God's house, we are to focus on what he has to say to us. We are in this hour and a half on Sunday mornings to simply sit back and to let the cares of the world melt away and be totally subsumed into the good that God has for us. Because he's going to take care of you. God will take care of you when you are hearing his word. God will take care of you when you are receiving his gifts. God will take care of you when you are in his house. You don't need to be afraid. God's got you. Let the cares of the world just melt away and simply let God fill you up. You'll go back. You will leave this place of rest. You'll go into the world. You'll have plenty of time to worry about all the things that are out there for you to worry about. 
You'll have plenty of time to worry about finances. You'll have plenty of time to worry about groceries. You'll have plenty of time to worry about that neighbor who's driving you crazy. But for right now, in this moment, in this place, simply let Jesus take care of you. Let the good shepherd grab hold of you and fill you up with good things. To do, so in, in, to do so requires a degree of faith and a degree of trust, right? I mean, we don't like to let go. We're talking in our informal pop-up Bible class this morning. We don't like to let go of our cares and our worries and of our baggages. Because that involves ceding a degree of control over to God. But the crowds gathered in this desolate place they're ready to do that because they recognized who was teaching them. They recognized that it was not some spiritual guru. They recognized that it was not some wise man, not just another rabbi or scribe or religious teacher, but it was the God of the universe who had come to them, for them, to be with them and to save them. That's the good news. Even before the cross, Jesus was there saving his people right now from hunger because he knew that they had more important things to worry about than food in their bellies. They had more important things to care about than worrying about getting a bite to eat. I find it interesting that we aren't told here what Jesus was teaching. We have the Sermon on the Mount. We have so many other teachings. But right here in this passage, we're not told what he was talking about. We can only imagine, can't we? We can only imagine the things that God was filling them up with. So also for you. Jesus gives you a miraculous meal this day. You come here to this place, not desolate, but teeming with life, to receive the words of life, to receive his word written and preached for you, to receive the words of the absolution, when in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you that your sins are totally and completely forgiven, that you don't need to walk around with that, with those baggage on your back anymore, that God has totally and completely wiped your slate clean. God fills you up with another miraculous meal. The Lord's Supper, here, bread and wine transformed into his body and blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Nourishing you and strengthening you to face whatever might come ahead. So don't go home. Don't go home just yet. There will be a time when we'll dismiss you and we'll give you the benediction and you'll make your ways to your cars or to the bus line or into Princeton Park if you've walked here, whatever the case may be. And you'll go home and the cares and the worries of life will come up. But for now in this place, let Jesus serve you. There's a uh, word for worship here in the Lutheran Church. Divine service, God's service, the worship service. The worship service is not about you serving God. It is about God serving you. Let him serve you this day. And just think about that. The God of the universe, the one who created everything that existed, wants to get down and serve you and fill you up. What a mighty God we serve. His might not found in strength or armies or political power, but in his love and in his mercy for a single human being. For me and for you. So take and eat. Christ's body for you. Take and drink. Christ's blood for you. Take and hear Christ's words for you. 
Take and feel Christ's baptism for you. Take and live. Knowing that Christ has lived for you, died for you, rose for you, seeks to fill you up each and every day. And has brought you to peace with God. A peace which passes all understanding, keeping your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have built one holy church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as our cornerstone. Grant unity to your church on earth through the work of your spirit and the faithful proclamation of Christ's reconciling cross. As you tore down the dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile in Christ, so also heal all division of doctrine or pride on earth, even as your church is one before your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have brought us from many families in the household of God. Continue to bless all Christians' homes, that fathers and mothers may faithfully lead their children by word and deed to call upon you as Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for your constant care and all we need to support this body and life. Attend in mercy to those in need among us. Free them from dismay and fear by the certainty that Christ is their righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Savior, who by his death has made satisfaction for our sins. Grant faith to all who come to this Holy Supper this day, that we may eat his true body for the forgiveness of sins and be satisfied unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O Living Bread from Heaven. Please sing along. O living bread from heaven, how well you feed your guest. The gifts that you have given have filled my heart with rest. O wondrous food of blessing, O cup that heals our woes, my heart this gift possessing with praises overflows. My Lord, you here have led me to this most holy place, and with yourself have fed me the treasures of your grace. For you have freely given what earth could never buy, the bread of life from heaven that now I shall not die. You gave me all I wanted, this food can death destroy, and you have freely granted the cup of endless joy. My Lord, I do not merit it, the favor you have shown, and all my soul and spirit bow down before your throne. Lord, grant me then the strengthened with heavenly food while here. My course on earth is lengthened to serve with holy fear. And when you call my spirit to leave the this world below, I enter through your merit where joys on mingled flow. It's so good to be here with you this day, beginning our day and our week with God. Our uh, This is a big week here at Resurrection. Uh, it's Vacation Bible School Week. VBS starts tomorrow. That is the, uh, recording the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 25th, that is the 26th, tomorrow the 26th at 6 o'clock p.m. right here, at, at 5 o'clock p.m. 5 o'clock p.m. right here at church goes from 5 till 8 and uh, your kids are welcome, your grandkids are welcome, and you are welcome also if you'd like to come and help or simply take part of VBS this week starting tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Tomorrow, of course, if you're watching this on uh, Sunday. Uh, other things coming up, we've got a guest speaker, our, our Back to Church Sunday coming up in August. That's uh, Pastor uh, Russell Belial, a son of this congregation. Many of you uh, may know him or may recall him, so uh, I hope that uh, you'll uh, join us for that. that. That will also be recorded for you. Uh, but for now, God bless you, be with you, and go with you. We'll see you down the line soon. Bye-bye.